Greetings everybody, my name is Tommy the Game Master and welcome to my channel. Well, Channel Awesome does their Disney December every year, so I decided to do a Disney game in honor of that. I was going to do more, but work schedule got ahead of me. Plus, there's this Pokemon and Final Fantasy games that both came out last month that I'm playing and really enjoying. But I managed to play through one game, so I thought I would share it with you today and just my thoughts on it. Let's take a look at Alice in Wonderland. How fitting as Dog Walker is doing the unnecessary direct-to-video Disney sequels that I'm going to be doing the unnecessary licensed tie-in game to an unnecessary live-action Alice in Wonderland movie from a few years ago. Since I've brought up Doug Walker already, I can say my opinion on the movie is very similar to his Nostalgia Critic review. Maybe not as harsh, but very similar. But the game actually surprised me in the fact, for the most part, it doesn't suck like a lot of movie tie-ins. Oh, don't get me wrong, I won't recommend it for $60 or even $20, but since I bought this as part of a Disney Mega Pack that was on sale on Steam for like $28 at the time, Meaning in total I spent about $2 on this, I can say I got my enjoyment out of the purchase. Let's take a look at Alice in Wonderland. If you've never seen the movie before, the basic plot is that Underland, not Wonderland, is in trouble of being overrun by the evil Red Queen and her Jabberwocky. Their only hope is that the right Alice will return to Underland as an adult, find the Vorpal Blade, and slaughter the Jabberwocky. The game story is pretty much the same as the Tim Burton movie, which to say it's not really that great. But still, the game does do a decent job with the plot and translating it into the game, and I did actually find myself enjoying it a tad bit occasionally, which is more than what I can say for the movie. And my opinion of the movie is, again, very, very low. Okay, I already showed you some clips, but most of them are pretty much from the cutscenes. So, you probably haven't figured this out yet, but I'll give you a quiz. In a game called Alice in Wonderland, what character do you think is pretty much an NPC outside of a quick time event at the very end of the game? A. Alice B. The White Rabbit C. The Cheshire Cat or D. The Mad Hatter If you guessed either B, C, or D, then congratulations, you're a freaking moron. The answer is A. Alice yeah, Alice isn't even a playable character in her own game. You think the game Alice in Wonderland would have you playing as Alice, the main character. Instead, you get to play as all the side characters. But once I got used to this fact, I actually really didn't mind it, as they all have quirks that make them infinitely more enjoyable than just running around as a... Stupid guy. Other characters include the White Rabbit, who can stop time, the March Hare who can use telekinesis, and the Mad Hatter who is the biggest character of all and not only is he good with the sword fighting, but he can also use his power of perception to literally solve puzzles and against foes to crush them. Speaking about puzzles, it's mainly what this game is about. It's all about solving environmental puzzles. In a lot of ways, this game kind of reminds me of the LEGO video games. Usually, each area has a door that has to be unlocked or a key or something that you must obtain by using these characters' special ability. They're not hard for the most part, and the game usually holds your hands through them. And I only got stumped on one towards the end of the game, and I got stumped more to the the fact that there was just a billion things to lock onto that I didn't know that there was this missing piece I could move in order to form the bridge. The puzzles for the most part are decent and somewhat fun. This desert scene which goes on a bit too long has you following a piece of string that oftentimes disappeared. During these segments though I couldn't help but wonder when the narrator would jump in and start calling me Stanley. While the puzzles can be fun the combat, unfortunately, is not. Don't get me wrong, the game gives it a solid try, but it's stuck in kids mode, and that kind of makes it even worse. As it is with the LEGO games, when you die, you don't lose much. All you do is drop a few coins, and then you're planted right back to where you are, making it really easy. So even though you do have to use special abilities to sometimes strip shields and stuff and you can even upgrade these abilities by finding secrets for the most part it's pointless because none of these special abilities really help you win fights all that much faster 
and you can't really ever die, so why bother going through the time and trouble of finding these secrets? I wouldn't even bring it up, but at the end of the game, the game fills in your map where all these secrets are. Meaning they want you to go find them and improve your character, but in the end it's pointless. And if you're wondering if the Jabberwocky is hard regardless if you upgrade or not, the answer is no. It's actually just a rather large quick time event preceded by some puzzles. So in the end, because there is absolutely no challenge to the action, this really does bring the game down several notches. It's just a shame because if Alice in Wonderland didn't suffer in this area and the upgrades were good, it would actually be a pretty decent game. The puzzles are decent, the controls are good, and the characters are different enough to be fun, but no challenge really brings this game down several notches to me. Like I said, I can't recommend this game for $20, which is its normal price. The graphics are a mixed bag. Can't say I really enjoy the character designs. They look creepy, and yeah, I know in some cases that's what they were going for in this game, but in too many cases, the dead eyes and just the botched character animations not really matching up do bring this game down another peg. The sets are for the most part nice. Most of them are garden and forest sets, but some like the desert do show a lot of work was done in this game. The game is about seven years old, I do believe, and it does show its age, unfortunately. Overall, it's not exactly ugly, but it's not what I would call eye candy either. The sound and music are good, and the voice replacements are really top-notch. Crispin Freeman does a terrific job doing Johnny Depp's Mad Hatter, and that includes the accent changes and a few of the other nuttiness that comes with the character. Come on. Hatter, wait! He'll help us. Snucking, fasting, fat and white. Never helped anyone in his life! He will help us. Normally, this game runs $20 on Steam. Can I recommend it for that price? No, not really. But if you can procure this game and either in a bundle or on sale where it will run you less than $5, it might be worth a pick up if you're a fan of the movie. You might enjoy it more than I did if you are a fan of a movie. I didn't really enjoy the movie that much. For a movie license game, though, it's not bad. In fact, by that standard, it's actually pretty good. But it does have its problems, mainly because it goes after a casual audience and it just upends any reward system for upgrading and customizing your character, and it makes it a bit of a slog with these upgrades no longer really important. Such a shame because this game does have a lot of potential that just goes unrealized. Anyways, this is Tommy the Game Master signing out. Before you go, feel free to click that icon on my face on the screen. Doing that will subscribe you to my channel. I would love to have you as a member of my community. I'll see you guys later. Have a nice day.